the issue of um, the rights of indigenous peoples. Yesterday and today we've dealt with the legacy of slavery when addressing issues of racial discrimination against people of African descent. Now I, I would like to turn to the legacy of colonialism through addressing the situation of indigenous peoples. The relationship between the history of colonialism and the human rights situation of indigenous peoples is taken up in the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and has most recently been highlighted by the Human Rights Council in its Resolution 487 of 2021, in which the Council put the situation of indigenous peoples into the context of colonialism and decolonization and advanced the understanding that human rights violations of indigenous peoples are a persistent legacy of colonialism. Against this background, the committee welcomes President Biden's memorandum on tribal consultation and strengthening nation to nation relationships of January 2021, highlighting respect for tribal sovereignty and self governance, including a commitment to fulfill treaty responsibilities to tribal nations and emphasizing the need for consultations with tribal nations. Could the state party please provide information on the concrete implementation of this presidential memorandum? and on efforts to give effect to tribal treaties. Does the state party consider engaging in further or intensifying ongoing dialogues with indigenous peoples, with traditional and tribal leaders, including indigenous peoples of insular territories, such as, for example, the Taino, as well as other unrecognized indigenous peoples? The committee takes note of the position of the state party that the principle of free, prior and informed consent calls for, and I quote, a process of meaningful consultation with tribal leaders, but not necessarily the agreement of those leaders before the actions addressed in those consultations are taken. The committee regrets that this understanding is not in accordance with its recommendation number 23 and not in accordance with international human rights standards in general. Against this background, the committee would like to know whether the state party wants to apply such a rather restrictive standard to free prior and informed consent in all cases, or whether the state party would not consider a more substantial standard when decisions of the state may have a significant and direct impact on indigenous peoples and may impede their rights and their way of life in a fundamental manner. Moreover, the committee is concerned by numerous reports pointing out that consultations are not conducted in a meaningful manner do not give the affected communities ample opportunity to raise their concerns in due time and are not adequately taken into account, in particular in planning and licensing processes. The committee would therefore like to know how the state party intends to guarantee that consultations with indigenous peoples take place at the earliest possible stage of planning, are inclusive and meaningful, and that the concerns advanced by indigenous peoples are taken into account in decisions by the state. The question of free prior and informed consent becomes most pertinent in the content, context of economic activities, in particular regarding the extractive industries. The committee would like to know what measures the state party has taken or is considering to take in order to protect the rights of indigenous peoples with regard to their lands, territories, sacred sites and way of life from the adverse effects of the activities of the extractive industries including extraction of transition minerals, infrastructure projects, and the construction of border fences and walls. In this context, the committee would also like to request updated information on the measures taken to address concerns raised under the, under the committee's early warning and urgent action procedure, in particular regarding the situation of the Lipan Apache Inde people, of the native Hawaiians and Kanaka Maulit indigenous peoples, of the Gwich'in indigenous peoples, and of the Anishinaabe indigenous peoples. Regarding the long-standing issue of the Western Shoshone peoples, the committee regrets that the current state party report merely refers to, previous, to the previous report from 2013. In light of the fact that not all affected tribes seem to accept the compensation offered for the disputed land, the committee would like to know whether the state party is still actively engaged in this issue and open to a sincere dialogue with the affected peoples with the aim of resolving the, the dispute. I would like to lastly turn to other human rights issues regarding indigenous peoples. The committee is concerned by reports of excessive use of force by law enforcement officials and by private security companies. It is also concerned by the disproportionately high risk of violence and in particular sexual violence 
for American Indian and Alaska Native women. And here I take up a point made by the country rapporteur, Madame Plakula. What measures does the state party take or consider taking to ensure that the right to security of individuals belonging to indiv indigenous peoples, including their right to freedom of assembly in the context of protests is guaranteed? What measures is the state party considering to fulfill its obligation to protect indigenous women from violence and sexual violence? How does it support victims of such violence? And how does it intend to ensure effective prosecution of alleged incidents? In this context, the committee welcomes the recent reauthorization of the Violence Against Women Act. However, the committee would like to know how the state party plans to improve criminal justice in Indian territories and through the jurisdiction of tribal courts, as well as the courts of the state party, and how it intends to enhance sensitivity to the specific perspectives of the affected indigenous women in this context. A quick last question on transnational corporations. Does the state party have legislation or any other form of regulation in place in order to ensure that the activities of corporations registered in the state party do not impede the human rights of indigenous peoples in other countries, either through their own activities, through their subsidiary companies abroad, or through their business relationships within the supply chain or the value chain? Does the state party consider enacting any form of due diligence regulation for transnational corporations? I thank you very much. I now give the floor to Mr. Gisey and um, 